Did you know that the largest copper price reserve is owned by a Mexican company? Good evening. It's our great pleasure to be here to represent the campus Mérida. For Grupo Mexico, we issue a buy recommendation based on our 12 month target price of 87.4 Mexican pesos. Grupo Mexico has a market cap of 551 billion pesos with a market cap with a profit flow of 40% and a 12 month and a 33 upside. Okay. Grupo Mexico is a conglomerate company, which has been performing since more than 100 years in Mexico, Peru, Chile, Spain, and the US. This company has been one of the leaders in the copper, copper industry, having the largest reserve, leader in transportation with Grupo Mexico Transportes, and with a reporting growth in the infrastructure division. With this division, we have this growth in the renewable energy, which is one of the points it has in the company. Well, some of the main strategies that make the strength of Grupo Mexico are his consistent and attractive dividend payment, a business portfolio worth diversified with sections in three different industries, and no, no mining projects around the world. This is why we insist in our buy recommendation. Well, as we can see, Grupo Mexico has had a constant revenue growth along the years, which is highly correlated with the copper price it has. Well, in 2021, 50.9% of the copper price increased, which was a competitive advantage for the company, because this represented they could have similar costs along the years. Therefore, in the past five years, the company has had an increment in production of 7% and a decrease in cash cost of 23%. For our four set periods, we consider it a conservative profile for the company because we are expecting a drop in the copper price, but we also know that the company has had a great performance on the industry. Talking about intensive capital investment, it is a need by the main reasons of the industry that Grupo Mexico works in to take in this place. Uh, as an example, uh, along the five years ago, the capex represented among the 25.41% of the net area of the company. As well, as an example, Grupo Mexico has two main projects on Peru and Mexico, with some of the with capitalization of 7.9 and 7.7 .7 billion US dollars, respectively, on the next 10 years. This is why we need to take out in the intensive capital investment. Grupo Mexico does not have an established dividend policy. Nevertheless, they have confirmed their, the, the commitment they have with their stockholders by issuing, uh, by maintaining their cash generation. They have maintained constant dividend payments. These payments have represented between a range of 28% and 64% of the company's net income. Since 2004, there has not been a, there has not been a single year that Mexico has not uh, reporting a uh, net margin uh, lower than than 12 percent. With a great improvement in the last last three years, uh, they reporting about to uh, net margin above this this 20 percent. And talking about solvency. Uh, the company also presents positive results, uh, as we can see in the in the part of net debt ratio. Uh, this ratio uh, not improved the the part of one one time in the before the the last ten years, and now when the, after the, of this year and in the last three years they improved at zero point seventy eight, and then they improve a lot more uh, to 0.3. Speaking of liquidity, Grupo Mexico has shown their ability to meet their current financial obligations with their short-term assets, having since 2003 a, a profit, a quick margin, a quick ratio of less than half higher than one time. After all, after the results in their 2021 results, we have a compounded annual growth of 12.5% 
over the last five years, with an increased net margin of 12.4%. We have seen of the, some of the financial highlights of the company, but how do we know that these are actually an advantage for Grupo Mexico? That's why a comparison between the top four copper producers in the world was useful. Grupo Mexico has improved its performance on key industry indicators, achieving global leadership on various operating metrics. One of the most important ones is undisputable leadership on cash costs, lowered by 0.4 US dollars per pound against top producers since 2019. In 2021, as profitability, Grupo Mexico achieved the best net margin and the second highest growth among its competitors. And despite the net debt EBITDA improvement that we have mentioned, there is still an area of, of opportunity considering that the top performer on this metric reached a net debt EBITDA ratio of 0 0.16, while Grupo Mexico has 0 0.3. Additionally, a metric that presented a typical performance was the total asset turnover, considering that four out of the five companies in our sample had operations within 0 0.47 and 0 0.59, while the top performer uh, reached 1.66. Well, according to the S&P Global ESG risk, we know that Grupo Mexico scored a 61 on the, score, on the total score. According the medium of the industry is 21 points, but there's still some improvement to make according to the 86 of the highest score. Uh, some of this, we, we decided to calculate a premium along their natural peers for this, for this part. In the environmental objectives, Kiko plans to diminish their impact. First, by increasing renewable energy by 25%, and second, by reducing CO2 emissions and greenhouse uh, effect by at least 5% in the mining industry. A point to highlight is that, it's that since 2016, more than 60% of the water use comes from recycled water. Speaking about the social impact Grupo Mexico has had, in the past few years, the role of women has increased to more and higher administrative positions. As of the last year, there has been an increase of 6% in the overall company. Grupo Mexico has several social focus programs, all managed by Grupo Mexico Foundation, whose goal is to develop sustainable and innovative programs. Well, talking about the governance part, it is important to say that the full committee is, is out by men, but they need to still work on that and they are committed to changes on more diversified persons. Also, they have a risk committee which address some of the financial governance and corporate risks. Moving on to our evaluation, we achieved, as, my previous, as previously mentioned, the price of 87.4 Mexican pesos, for which we used two methods, a discounted cash flow weighted with 70% and obtained a target price of 86.55 Mexican pesos. The remaining was used for the relative valuation and we obtain a price of 87.4 Mexican pesos. Moving into the DCF, since Grupo Mexico participates in three different complex industries, we use a sum of the parts methodology. Uh, by the valuation of, for the valuation of the mining division, we take different assumptions. The first is the explanatory variable of, this, of the sales projection was the copper price. Uh, we carried out an ARIMA model to project the prices of this mineral. Uh, the second one is uh, cost and expenses were projected by, by, by the U.S. inflation rate. And finally, the other accounts of the, of the income statement and the balance sheet were projected with the, with the vertical and horizontal analysis. Later on, we got in the WAC from this analysis in the TCF uh, 10.79, in which we already done consider the award given, and we use enterprise value over EBITDA multiple in order to get a 66.34 Mexican pesos in the valuation for the mining division. For infrastructure and transportation, we also use these variables except for the sales explanatory variable that was the growth of the Mexican GDP. Moving on to our relative valuation, we have, we use two equity multiples and three enterprise value multiples. As we use companies in the mining industry, considering that 80% of the total revenue of the company is explained by this industry, 
we to reduce biases, we use leading co copper extractors from different regions of the world, and the Mexican company, Peñones. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks for the presentation. I have one question. Within the financial analysis, you're using an ESG reward. Could you tell us where is this reward based on? Um, yes, well, basically we did this chart, or basically we compare with its peers. In the S&P scores, we use all the S&P scores from each of the peers we use, the natural peers in each division, in which we get the median from it. Then with that median from all the scores, we got an average like median from that median, and then we started scoring the, from the worst to the best. And we did all that procedure considering uh, cost of equity of at most 5% to give. And there, there's where we saw the change, and we saw the median points in all of it. And we got that score based on the, as the qualifications of all the natural peers in each division. Maybe, maybe more than the mathematical part, it's what the, what's the rational thing for, behind a premium when, when you have a company that you mentioned has some areas of improvements on the ESG side? First, on the valuation, we wanted to put a price or a, a, a punishment instead, depending on their ESG practices. For the cost of debt, why did you use the Mexican bond only? given that it's a global company, or it operates in several countries? Uh, because, uh, well, this is a Mexican co company, and all the, not all the mines they have here, but uh, the principal, the principal mines in the, in his portfolio of different businesses, uh, they, have, they receive principal, uh, well, this, this this, the principal revenue of the company comes from this country, so I, we consider that it's uh, the best option to so, so that assumes that most of the funding comes from Mexico, even though they have operations worldwide, or in several countries? Yes, just because we use an, another variables like the uh, US inflation rate by, for the cost, and we take this, this assumption to it also considered a, the other country where they have mines. Okay. Uh, my question has to do with the uh, dividend. And uh, Grupo Mexico has a high dividend yield uh, that's relative, so higher than most of the public companies in, in Mexico. And a high dividend. Uh, could be seen as something uh, very positive for some stockholders, uh, analysts, uh, potential investors, but some other can say, you know, don't, don't give me too much cash. Uh, I prefer uh, you to look for opportunities and put the money to work. So, uh, do you think, and, and I, I also we saw uh, in a chart the capex they have is very stable. So, do you think they have the right policy dividend, or which one do you think that would be the best for? Uh, dividend policy for the company? Well, considering that there's no actual dividend policy due to, precisely due, due to the, uh, sorry, the intensive capital investment, there's no other option that actually wait for the results of the company to actually analyze if there's a, a right amount to give for dividends. As we see, since 2003, the company has paid dividends. So. They have demonstrated solid cash generation while also committing to the stockholders. So there's no right answer considering that the intensive capital can affect many variables within the cash generation of the company. Yeah. In your forecast, are you considering a recession scenario for the next year? Or not? What, what will be the effects? Well, we have consider a conservative scenario, considering that uh, the price of copper is expected to drop from our ARIMA model and from specialist analyze, analysis. And the company is expected to open new mining projects in Peru and Mexico. 
which will compensate the, the dropping price of copper. And this has been translated in a more conservative growth and of around 10% compared to the growth rate from 2021 to 2027. What do you think about the uh, recent acquisition of Plan Grupo? A new model, a new business so line. Well, um, considering they already have three divisions, it will make Grupo Mexico even more a complex company, which, well, it can bring a lot of more revenue streams, yeah, that's for sure. But in the valuation overall, it can create also risk. It can increase the risks in the company, so along the side, it can be 50-50. It's a giving chance. Like, it can be really profitable if they know how to exploit that part because they do not have that kind of divisions. What if they end up buying Banamex and have it from the Group of Mexico structure as well? Well, Group of Mexico has demonstrated that they want to expand their portfolio of revenue streams, and that has resulted in increasing portions of the revenue coming from the other industries, not only from mining, and therefore intro the introduction to the banking world on the one hand, can be a, a source of concern for investors, considering the complexity of the, that the company will have. But on the other hand, we can see that Grupo Mexico is actually looking to evolve and to actually become a bigger company and, and expand its revenue streams. When you compare Grupo Mexico with other companies not from the mining sector, do you believe the Group of Mexico deserves an ESG premium on, on their capital structure as you as you use when comparing it with the, the peers in the industry? Well, yes, we have done the research in all of the other peers, and we have found that Grupo Mexico has not just solid um, revenue streams, but overall the ESG report they have done annually since 2015 or I think more years, they have proved that they really are evolving along and I have, uh, we have done research in all of uh, most of them, and we have found that there is not as much disclosure at the company. But I don't think I explained myself clearly. When you compare Group of Mexico with other companies from other, not from their industry, from I don't, I don't know, like uh, not, not natural peers. peers, exactly, okay. not peers. Do you think Group of Mexico deserves an ESG premium? Well, when we go outside, we can get like, they're from mining industry, which it's one of the industries which has more impact in the environment also. We will, we will say no, because they have a lot of impact in the environmental, and they have their, well, their main revenue stream. It's really harmful for the environment, which other companies do not. So it will be really hard to compare with others that are not from their division and to give that type of award. Would you consider buying Southern Copper instead of Grupo Mexico? Or if you didn't do the analysis, that's fine. But okay. given that most of your assets are mining, and most of it is Southern Copper, many investors sometimes prefer to forget about the lower discount and just go through the mining assets already. Yes. Part of Value adding the company as some of the parts, it has the advantage that we can actually analyze each division of the company by separate. And we have found that America's main co corporation, which obviously primarily subsidiary is selling copper corporation, also has an upside on its current part, current price. Of course, they will, there will also need to be other considerations, uh, especially when we know that it's a, an issuer that comes from the United States, so different valuation, well, not valuation, but variables would need to be included to give a more precise analysis. And anything else you want to stress or to highlight from your presentation? You have 50 seconds. Well, yeah, we would like just to emphasize how we did the walk. It was right here. We did an average from the past cost of equity. We used a 10 year bond with Mexican bond, yeah, but we used a modern industry bet and equity risk premium, which we think is one of the most innovative um, I don't, um, ways to calculate this type of 
industries which are more diversified than others are so specific when we do this type of sum of parts and well also the ESG award that we gave so we we consider Grupo Mexico a company as a must-have in our portfolio since they have um, really they're looking for improvement and they are one of the greatest corporate companies in the world thank you